Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my studio. And today I'm going to do a watercolor demonstration. And uh, I'm broadcasting from uh, Chesapeake, Virginia. And uh, I'm on uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitch. And I'm in the studio today with my wife, Gloria. Hello, everyone. And uh, I've got the chat room on. Uh, the chat room's live, so if you have questions or comments, uh, please write those down, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, you can also make comments on the video too after you've seen the video again play it over you can also make comments uh, Today uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a demonstration of uh, what I call a uh, path of light and uh, I was out painting last weekend and did some uh, did a preliminary uh, uh, Painting uh, and I brought it back to the studio and reworked a little bit uh, some of the planning and some of the uh, Design which I'll go over here in a minute. So let's go to my uh, plant uh, painting table and let me get started So that's the uh, that's the view that I that I was at over the weekend. Uh, you can see here it's a uh, it's got a little waterway here, and I've got trees and a nice path of light coming from the sky over the ground, and uh, some trees in the background and so forth. Uh, so what I did was well, this is this is what I did. This is my plein air uh, plein air sketch that I did uh, on location of that scene, and uh, I just took just a small area, and uh, I had to, I'm going to. What I did was I modified. I'm going to take the building. The buildings are not necessary, so I'm going to take the buildings out, and I'm going to, I'm going to expand the area just a little bit more to see more of the uh, shadow pattern. So this was just an idea what I did on location of this painting, uh, but that's the location I was looking at right there. That's my viewpoint of what I painted. Uh, in my sketch, I've got a, I did a sketch here from the uh, the photograph. And you can see here what I did. Now I've added a, uh, I've added a sailboat here into the water. Uh, during my, during my painting process, uh, there was a lot of boats going by, and I, I saw this sailboat go. I said, oh, I said, you know what? I'm going to put that in. As I took the buildings out of the background, well, I'm going to replace that and put in a, a sailboat that was going by. So in the drawing, there's a little. You can see the sailboat here in the background, on the water. So I added that to the painting process today. So today I'm going to show you uh, how I paint the uh, path of light and also uh, I'd simplify the painting. You'll see the steps I'm doing will be make it go a lot faster and eliminate a lot of the details in the background. And I've got a couple of techniques I'm going to show you which I think you're going to find very interesting in how I painted the shadows. So you want to look forward to that. Okay, uh, on my uh, painting table here well, I've got this is my uh, 140 pound Gemini watercolor paper and this is a quarter sheet it's uh, 15 inches long and 11 inches wide 11 inches up here up, uh, up and down and 15 inches wide and it's 140 pound uh, archival uh, watercolor paper uh, it's really the only only paper I use uh, for watercolor paintings now what I did here I'm going to show you I've, I put the uh, uh, I, I used the Holbein uh, masking fluid uh, and a small a small brush, small water brush, and, a, and just a little, uh, just a little cup of water. And uh, what I did was I put in, I, I uh, masked out some of the mask on the boat and a little bit of the white area here I want to save. And I, along the edge of the bushes here, I went ahead and highlighted uh, some of the outline here of that so I can go ahead and paint over that. So I did some white masking uh, to uh, protect some of the white paper uh, until I get painted and get started. Okay, um, I'll say... Uh, Okay, I've eliminated the process here, eliminated a lot of detail, so we're going to get right into work here. Uh, oh, my, uh, my palette, this is my artist watercolor palette with uh, Holbein Artist Watercolors. I'm going to be using uh, at, least three, at least three blues today. Uh, ooh, uh, cobalt blue and uh, ultramarine blue deep, and I'll be using a little bit of Payne's Gray. And up down here, I'll be using yellow, yellow lemon, and a little bit of yellow ochre, and maybe a little bit of a hooker's green. So uh, let me go ahead and get started here. What I'm going to do is take the uh, hockey, I'm going to use the hockey brush from uh, Silver Brush. This is a large one. I'm going to use that for watering down. And then I've got two synthetic brushes starting out with. I've got the, the one inch flat and the half inch flat uh, Holbein synthetic brushes. I'll be using those two to get started out. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the hockey, hockey brush and put some water in it. Uh, the hockey brush is a natural hair. It's a goat hair, but it holds a lot of water and a lot of paint. But I'm going to use this large, the large hockey. Uh, all the paints and brushes and so forth 
and the, and even the masking fluid is all on my website, everswatercolors.com. So let me get uh, some water here. I'm going to just put water across the top here. That'll help the uh, the paint flow a little faster, a little smoother. So I'll wet the uh, wet the paper, and I'm going to go on down. I'm going to put a little bit of water on the. Uh, I'm going to put water on the water area. That'll also help uh, just to moisten it up a little bit. Okay. Okay, that's all I need to get started. All right, now I'm going to use the uh, large brush. I'm going to start out with uh, the sky and the water. I'll do the sky and the water using blue, using the blue. I'm using a little bit of, I'll use a darker blue at the top, which is uh, cobalt blue. So I'll go up here and start at the top of the paper. So the darker value will be at the top top of the paper, uh, which usually in the sky you'll see. If you look at the sky outside, and you'll see the top, uh, the water. The top of the sky is always a little bit darker because of the atmospheric uh, condition out there. Now I'm going to mix up a little bit of uh, lighter blue. Here we go, and I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go down as I go down as I go down in the sky. I'm going to get lighter and lighter. Okay, and I can paint across the the sailboat mask here because I have masking fluid on. That's why I put the masking fluid so I could be have a lot of freedom here on on applying the paint. Go right across the, uh, the tree. There's large there's trees back there. Tree line. I put the I put the blue uh, paint right over top of the trees. I'll be painting over top of those, so it doesn't really hurt. Now I'm going to go down into the uh, water. Also, uh, it was a nice sunny day that day, so I had lots of uh, sunshine. So the water is going to be reflecting the color of the sky. So I'll make that blue also, or the same same value. And uh, I got the tops of these little bushes here. I've, I've got them covered with uh, masking fluid. This is cerulean blue. My light blue is cerulean blue. That's what I got in the sky, and I'm also using it here in the water. Cerulean blue is my light blue, and my darker blue is cobalt blue. Now come on down here to uh, to the shoreline. Go over top of those uh, little bushes right there. Now while I'm here, I'm going to take a smaller brush. Uh, this is a number six uh, number six round. I'm going to put the, a little darker blue along the edge here because uh, this will be the shadow coming down from the tree line. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in right now. So I'm going to put a little bit of darker blue along the edge of the water, along the edge of the water next to the tree line, uh, to simulate the, a shadow pattern coming from the trees. And uh, this boat's also going to, the sailboat's also going to cast a shadow in the water. So I'm going to put that in also, and that'll dry much lighter. So watercolor will dry about 30% lighter uh, once you put that. It. it may look dark when you start out, but uh, when it dries. Uh, it's a lot lighter. Okay, all right. I'm going to draw. I'm going to dry this now, so I can go ahead and put the trees in. So I'm going to take the uh, the hair dryer and uh, going to get it dry. Okay, I started with the uh, cobalt blue and I had the cerulean blue here for the sky. That gives me a darker blue at the top, and then as I come down toward the horizon, there's a lighter blue. Okay. So I'm drying this now so I can go ahead and put the uh, tree line in. And in the water, I used the same color. I used uh, the cerulean blue in the water, and a little bit of uh, 
cobalt blue as a, as a shadow area along the edge of the tree line. So this will set the stage for, this will set the back, most of the background beside the trees. And once I put those in, we'll have the background done. Okay. All right, that's dry. And you check it with the back of your hand. If it feels warm, uh, it's dry. If it still feels cool, it means it's still a little bit damp. But not, this feels warm. We're fine. Okay, now I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to use a half inch. Now I'm going to use a half inch flat brush. Now and I'm going to mix up a little bit of a uh, little bit of tree color, and I'm going to use a little bit of ultramarine. It'll it'll darken it up a little bit. Ultramarine deep. And I'm going to add a, a touch of uh, Hooker's Green now. It'll give me some green color. But I also like to mix my colors. So what I'm going to come over here and I'll pick up a little bit of uh, yellow lemon and mix in with that that mix. I always like to mix my color. I don't like to use too much of the pure colors out of the palette. I like to have a mixture. So I'm going to have a little bit of uh, yellow lemon mixed in with this ultramarine blue to give me another green. And the darker, I'm going to have a dark and a light mix because uh, as you'll see here, uh, as I paint this in, uh, I'm going to put a little more, a little more yellow down here. A little more yellow, so I get a lighter value. A little more yellow, give me a lighter, lighter green. Mix it in with that uh, ultramarine blue. And down here at the, this end of the uh, tree, tree line, uh, the sun was really shining, so it's a little bit warmer down here. So the, the green, the lighter, there'll be a lighter value of the, the green color down here. So I'll start out with a lighter, a lighter green uh, down here because this is where the sun was coming in. It was coming in from the left side to the right. So uh, the tree, the tree was, the trees were a little bit lighter down here at this point. Now I'm going to make sure my edges are a little bit variable. I'll make sure I have uh, some. They look like tree, tree edges. Uh, give me a little. Irregularity up there to show that uh, there's trees. Now, as I come closer here to the center area, things start getting a little bit darker because we're getting a little further away from the light. Uh, the top of the trees were still the sun. The sun was still shining uh, across the top of these trees, but down toward the bottom of the trees, they got darker. So I'll start putting adding in some more, adding a little bit darker, a little bit darker mix down here. And down toward the the base of the trees, there were some shadows along the base of the of the trees. So we'll put some little darker green along there. So the water line now will have uh, this water line will be covered up uh, with some of these trees anyway. But we, right now, I just got get the baseline get the baseline down. And we'll continue on back here now. Go to get around this sailboat. Uh, now I'm going to take my time here because it, this is uh, I got uh, some of it covered, but I'm going to keep uh, an option here on paint. I I didn't uh, cover the uh, the mask, and I may have to go in and put some uh, put some uh, white paint in there. I'll try to keep my head out of your view so you, uh, you can see what I'm doing. But sometimes I get carried away. I want to see what I'm doing too. <laughs> okay. Keep this, uh, I'll come up here next to this, uh, going next to the mask and next to the sailboat. Okay. And then we'll come out on this side over here now. I'll make it a little bit darker over here. Then we'll work in toward the middle. Put some tree line, put some trees up here uh, to show a little bit of uh, foliage 
little bit of foliage up here around the edge, up on the edges. Okay. All right, now I'm coming down now next to the sailboat. So here I'll be careful again. Uh, I've got I got some of it covered up with masking fluid, but some of it still doesn't have paint on it yet. There's a little there's a little sail storage that's on the top of the uh, next to the mask. And it extends out on the main boom there. There's a there's a storage uh, pouch where they carry they carry the sail in when it's not deployed. Now we're almost done with this. I just want to go in there. Let's see. I may get another smaller brush even yet. So I'm gonna go in here now and really really uh, be careful going around this mask area. There's some of that dark green in there. around the sailboat. Yeah, we're almost free now, almost free. I'm gonna go down here past this area here. Yeah, I'm okay. There's a little, there's a little cabin on this, a little cabin on this sailboat. Right, that's ready, ready to go. And uh, I left the figures off, but just you know, it's all necessary for this particular painting to put figures in. But I could have put some figures in there also. Okay, now let's finish out. Let's finish out the end here. I've got to finish off the end of the tree line here. These were pretty. These were pretty dark back here because the shadow, the shadows on these trees were a lot darker back on this side because the light was off to the left, but off to the right side it was a lot, a lot of shadows over here. On this particular end of the of the uh, area. Now let's see. Okay. Uh, the background is dark because I want that to contrast with the uh, the white white parts of the white sail there's no sail on this i've got it'll, it'll be a different color but the uh, you'll see uh, the mask i'm going to leave white the lines white the little cabin is going to be white the rest of the, i'm going to paint the sail the sailboat a different color here as soon as this paint here dries and now i'm just touching i'll make sure i got all the white uh, the white paper covered there okay all right, now I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna just check this, check the edge a little bit here. But I'm just making sure I've got a little variety, nice variety of uh, shapes and sizes along here. And uh, not much detail, but just enough to to uh, make it more interesting. So, okay, now let's dry this. Okay, well the tree line again is a simple part of the background, uh, but uh, you'll notice here I've got from this side here is light on the left and as I go forward to the right it got a little bit darker uh, because of the shadows in the trees. And uh, it's, some of that's going to be covered up with the foreground anyway, so we'll just get a nice background started here. I think what I'll do... Uh, yeah, I'll let that go. Let that nice and dry. Okay, all right. Let's let that dry by itself for a while. I want to get. I'm going to start here in the foreground. Now the foreground is going to have a lot of uh, color in it. Uh, you can see here from the picture. There's a lot of color. This is a. This is the uh, pine needles on the ground, and these are old pine needles that are turned brown. Uh, but the, the fresh pine needles are over here, okay? So they're going to have a different color here and then uh, light light and dark contrast. So let me take this out. I put a little tape down there to keep the paper from moving around. Now I can move it maybe up here. I keep the paper just one little piece of tape just to keep it from moving too much. 
Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, mix up some colors here. I'm finished with this green up here right now. So I'll move this area, I'll move this out with a sponge and fix my palette now for the, uh, the ground color. So what I'm going to do now is uh, start out with uh, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. So the pine needles are, are or orangey, but they're, you know, uh, burnt sienna's got an orange color. It's got a, like a burnt orange. It's got like a, uh, and I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, yellow orange in here, a yellow orange mixed in. That'll give me the color of that uh, pine cones, okay? That and, that and the burnt sienna is will be one of the main colors. Okay, and I'm gonna put a dab of uh, Payne's Gray over here That'll dull it down just because I want to dull that color down just a little bit. And I'll mix up a little bit of ultramarine blue in there. Ultramarine blue and orange is, 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 are, are complementary colors, so that'll tone it down also. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to start out with is I'm going to go ahead and put in with the, this is the one, this is the one inch uh, flat brush. I think I can start out with that. I think I'll start out with that. Uh, every time I paint, I forget where I, what I used before, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and put in some color here. So, uh, well, I'm going to switch brushes, and this is what I want. To, I'll show you one technique. This is an old, this is an old bristle brush, one inch. You can buy these at a hardware store. Very simple, a one inch uh, bristle brush, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of this uh, orange, and now I'm going to put in some texture down here. Now, pine needles are uh, all over the place here. So this, this brush stroke, I'm going to use like a pine needle. Just get a crisscross, crisscross motion. And I'm going to vary the brush stroke. Just want to get some color down. And I'll mix up some more paint, get a little more orange in there. Make it nice and, make it nice and bright over here. Because this, this is where the light, this is where the, uh, the sun was really shining through over here. And it really showed off in the... In the photograph I showed you, and of course when I painted it, uh, that's what I saw too. I painted exactly what I saw, and there's a lot of orange over here, a lot of orange and browns. And I thought this uh, this bristle brush would just do the trick here by just uh, getting the uh, the brush strokes down. So now over here, as I move here to the left, it's going to get a little bit brown, a little bit duller. So I'm going to mix up a little more blue with that burnt sienna. Mix blue in with that burnt sienna. It'll give me a, a grayish brown. Okay, and I'll get that color in there, and it, it uh, that will vary also in value, lights and darks. This color over here was uh, mo mostly mostly dull. Dull gray or a dull brown on this side over here, and it went out into that nice orangey color with the burnt sienna. So this is this is just laying the the base down, laying the base colors down. Let's see. Now, what I can also do is take my spray bottle. Now, I'm using here, I'm using the Pound in the Bottle Dot Spray Bottle, and this happens to have yellow orange in it. A dot spray bottle with a white top. These are only sold exclusively on Everest watercolors. And what I do is I prime the pump, and I can put some, some more color out here just by spraying a little bit. You can see here the dots I'm making a little bit, and I can move that around also with a paintbrush. And then I can put in some, uh, now this happens to be burnt sienna in a dot spray bottle with a white top. Palette in the bottle, and the pump, I, I prime the pump. Come over here to my uh, sprint bucket, and I can go in here and put a little bit of a uh, little bit of burnt sienna on there because I want some mixtures of colors down here at the bottom. Nice bright colors, and then some dark, dull, duller colors over here. Okay, and then I'll go back with that uh, bristle brush, and I'll start moving some of that, or moving some of that paint around a little bit. Okay. So get get a lot of paint on the paper, and then you use your brush stroke to move the paint around. Okay. 
Okay. Now we're going to get this a little bit darker down in this corner because it's in shadow. Okay, then I can do a little bit of, uh, take my one inch brush now, and go up here and do a little bit of, a uh, little, little bit of detail here on the, along the edge of the waterway. Just get that color in there, just where I like it. Now I'm going to leave some white paper showing here for right now. I can always go back in, I can always go back in and, and uh, add some more color on top. And over here, I'm even going to put, I'm going to put a little hint of that orange in here because, you know, it's still got the pine needles there, even though it's a duller, a duller color. I still want to get, keep some of that color alive in here, all across the whole painting. So really, right, there's the two main colors in this painting so far are the blues and the oranges, which are, are nice, nice contrasting colors in a painting. They're a complementary, so they give a, an opportunity for a lot of contrast, uh, in the painting. And I might take some more of this orange now and, and kind of and really brighten up some of these areas now. Now I'm using a dry brush almost. I'm taking this with just a just pa uh, plain paint in here. Okay. All right, now it's pretty wet now, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna dry this a little bit before we get started. Okay. So in the foreground here, I used uh, an orange color, which was uh, yellow orange with uh, burnt sienna, and uh, I got the color. I used uh, the spray bottle, the dot spray bottle, out in the bottle with the. Uh, yellow orange and the burnt sienna. Then I also use the, uh, the bristle brush for texture. I'll go back, I'll use some more of that before I finish. This will just get the base coat down. We'll get this nice and dry, especially along this border up here. Right on the edge. Okay, get this nice and dry. Okay, all right. Now I'm going to I'm going to show you I'm going to show you now a different technique that I used. Uh, I didn't use this in plain air, but I used this back in the studio. What I'm going to do now I'm going to paint the trees in. You notice here uh, in the photograph reference and also my drawing a lot of a lot of vertical a lot of vertical strokes here. So I'm going to use uh, uh, I try to you try to do it by a freehand, but I think a little easier. I need an extra tool to help me. So what I'm going to do first of all. On the first one, I think I'll use uh, I'm going to use the big brush. This is a number 16 round Holbein. This is a synthetic brush, but 16 round, really nice. And I'm going to mix up a a dark color. I'm going to use a ultramarine blue mixed in with a little bit of burnt sienna. So these trees now were dark brown, and of course the sun was behind them. They were backlit, so they show up being very dark. I'm just about black. So I'm going to have this nice dark brown color and I'm going to introduce a little bit of uh, Payne's Gray to that to darken it up even more. So ultramarine blue and burnt sienna will give me a nice dark brown and then a, a touch of Payne's Gray will make it even darker. Okay. Now over here on the right hand side I've got one tree here, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And what I do here is I, I hold the paper down, and then I'm just going to put the brush on the paper, and I just drag it down the side. This happens to be a tree that's right on the edge of the paper, which I want it to be like a border. Not a border, but it's like a, a barrier where your eyes won't go past that, that portion. Okay? So, all right, so that's, that's one tree in. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use, uh, let's see, I think I'm going to use another brush. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to use another brush. I'm going to use a smaller brush. 
But here's here's the trick. Here's what I did. Uh, I took. I needed a straight edge, so here's a piece of uh, wood. It's a two by four piece of two by four, and I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to take a straight edge and line it up with where I want to paint. So I'm going to start here on the right and line it up with the line it up with the uh, with the shape I want. And that's the shape of the tree. All right, now I load the brush. Fully loaded. And then I hold the I hold the brush along the edge of the straight edge. And I drag it down straight where I want it to go. And it'll be or the trees are loose, a little bit a little bit wider at the bottom, so I'm gonna make that a little bit wider there. Okay. So that's tree number one. And I think this is a lot easier to do than to try to do a free, if you do a freehand, it's a long way to go with a brush stroke. So, especially this direction, vertical direction. So I'm going to line this up again, load up the brush. Now this, this tree is a little bit, a little bit uh, smaller. So we'll just uh, compensate for that. We'll come up here and I've got it lined up and I'll come down. Now, if, uh, you get it started. And I'm just I'm putting barely just barely touching the paper with the brush to get a smaller a smaller line. Then I can finish off the edge here. I got some masking fluid on that, so that that will come off when I do the when I do the bushes. And I'm just correcting some of the spots here that drove it along. Okay, there's two down. All right, now there's one over here, a little bit larger. And uh, what I think I can do, though, I can I can go back to this brush here. I'll, I'll use a bigger brush because this is a larger tree, so I can probably put a little more paint in there. So I line it up. This is this one's at an angle, so I, I move my I move my uh, support mechanism here, which is a piece of wood. Now I'm going to load up my brush, make sure I got plenty of paint in it. I want you to make sure you have enough paint in it to cover that area. So I mean I got this big big brush has got a lot of paint in it anyway. Nice now I got make sure I got a nice sharp point. Then I'm going to draw this one down from the very top. And now the shape set up, I'm going to change it. I'm going to go back in and make a little correction. Give this, give this tree some bumps. Make it a little wider down here. So to get that to get that tree started, I went ahead and put it in with the with my uh, my assistant here, my aide. Okay, let's put another one in. I've got this one over here, another big one. So line up the uh, line up the line up the, the block and my straight edge, and I go up here to the top. Okay, got that one in. All right, this one here, I'm gonna have to do a smaller brush. So I'm switch brushes again. This one's got a little different, a uh, little different uh, shape to it. So I'm gonna change the brush. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush. So I line up the line up the block, and then I line up my straight edge. Load the brush with paint, and then I'm gonna line this up and come up here. point line up the brush a little wider at the bottom 
Now this one has a little wide to it, so I'm going to add a little, another limb on this one. Okay. And add a little, add a little more width on this one. Okay. All right. Now let's do. Uh, let's go back to the big brush again. I got another big. I got another bigger tree to do. And line this one up. So what I do now, I line up the uh, straight edge to my drawing. I got a drawing on here of where I want to go. Uh, then I load the brush with the color I want. And then I start at the top and bring it down, and use as much pressure as I need to make the size of the of the stroke that I want. And then I can make then I can make the final corrections down here once I get it up on the in the air. There we go. Okay. Um, switch brushes again. So I'm moving from right to left because that's the otherwise my uh, uh, my straight edge would get in the way. So this is going to be another smaller branch. It's going to be another smaller trunk. So line it up. This takes a little practice. You get a piece of paper and, and load your brush, and then you take a practice uh, drawing what you're doing, and then and then practice your stroke so that you get used to the technique. But this is this is about the best way to get a nice straight line. And because these trees were that way, uh, I didn't want to make them so arbitrarily shaped and so forth, because uh, they get all crooked and bended and so forth. This way, I've got a pretty good control over the brush stroke. Better than just doing it by freehand, because it's a, it's a long stroke to make with uh, a load of brush with all that paint in it. Okay, got that one. Then we'll go back to the smaller brush again. I need some more paint, so mix up some more paint. These are dark trees, so you can get plenty of uh, blue and plenty of burnt sienna, a little bit of black, a little bit of Payne's gray. Okay, now we'll move this over a bit so you can see what I'm doing. It's okay, we're moving along. Now I'm going to put another small one in. This one here is going to come down and move the block out and then the edge. I'm lining, I'm lining the block up, lining the edge, uh, straight edge up with the, uh, the drawing that I have there. Okay. And then I, then I uh, put the brush along the edge of the straight edge and drag it down. Okay. And come along and fill in the Fill in the brushwork. There we go. Okay. Let's see. I got another one in there. And this one's got a little bit. This has got a little bit of tilt to it. So each one of these trees had a little bit of lean to them. A little bit of the different sizes. But I'm just going to do enough of these just to get the the gist of the tree line. And it's pretty close to what I pretty close to what I saw. And then when you're planting paint air or you're planting, you're painting uh, from a photograph, uh, you just pick out the sizes and the shapes and so forth that you want in your design. And try to make each one a little bit different, both the size, the shape, and angles and so forth. Here we go, another one. A little bit over and this, a little bit different uh, distance, a little bit different size in between. I see I gotta bring this over. I'm trying to keep this in camera so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, this edge here. Let's see. One more. Move that brush up more. I 
got a couple more to go. I'm gonna put those in before I finish. This one here. I think I did this a different way before. Um, I forgot. I forgot how I did it the first time. This is, I used another. I used another uh, way of handling it, but this is working okay. This is just to show you the methodology that can be used to paint something like this. This one over here, I'm going to draw this one all the way up myself. So come up from here and bring it on down. And it curves that, bring this one in, curve it in. Okay. All right. And I got one more big one. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, this one here, I need uh, a little more paint to it. So let me uh, load up the large paintbrush. Okay. So this one here, this is, a, this is a larger tree, so I'm going to line this up real good and use the bigger brush, load it up, bring it on down, okay, and this has a little branch to it, so I'm going to put the branch on, put the, add the branch to that one, okay, and up here to the side, I got, just like I did on my right side, I got another one over here, so I'm going to turn my paint around, turn my paint around, paint around. And I'm going to drag, I'm going to drag the brush along the edge over here. And I'm going to start about right. Let's see. So I'm dragging the brush along the edge of the paper now. And I'm going to drag this up here to the top of the painting. And this will be the uh, edge, or the left edge of the painting. Okay. So it's also another barrier so the eyes don't go off to the left side, okay? And we'll turn that around. Okay. Okay. Now, I've got one here. I'll let that, I'm going to let that one dry a little bit before I do any more. There's another one I want to add in, but I can't do that right now. Okay. All right. So there's lots of, there's a little bit of foliage and so forth, which will cover up some of the uh, base lines and so forth. Now, what i got to do now, i got to put the shadow patterns in. I'm going to use the same technique for the shadow pattern. But before I do that, let's let that dry. I'm gonna I'm gonna paint with the boat, so I'm gonna change my uh, subject matter. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix up a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'm gonna I'm gonna paint the blue. I'm gonna paint the blue. Uh, <laughs> blue. I'll paint the bait. Boot. The boat blue. And let's see. I'm gonna get my head in the way of the painting here. So this is a sail, this is a sail, the sail ba a bag or whatever they call it. So it holds a sail, and it's stored. It's how they store the sail when it's not under sail. They put the they put the sail along the, this main mask and main beam here, and that's how they stow it, and that's how they transport it, and also on the on the sailboat. Now we get the cover the white paper there. Okay. So that's that part, and then the boat itself. It uh, they usually, they usually uh, uh, the colors are very. Uh, they usually they have a color combination where the bag usually matches the color of the of the boat, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the same color on the sailboat as we have on the on the tire. So I'll use the same ultramarine blue. This had a little bit of white trim on it, so I'll leave that on there also. A little bit of white trim. On the, on the edge of the boat, and there's, there's also a white trim at the bottom, which I masked out already, so I'm not going to worry about uh, leaving that blank. It's already going to be blank because I got, I got masking fluid there. So this will also, uh, this blue will also uh, have a nice contrast with the rest of the painting because it's going to I have blue, which is okay. It's a, it was a blue color. The boat actually was blue. I didn't change the color of the boat. I didn't think another color in here would uh, make any different. Would make that much of an impact on this painting. But this is this is going to be the focal point. I've got the uh, sailboat and uh, 
the shadow pattern. I thought that would be the most interesting two areas to uh, demonstrate and show. Okay, so we'll let that dry. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the shadow patterns in the ground. And uh, I really forget how I did the other one. I, I did it uh, a way that. Let me see if I can do something else. Oh, that's not. I want something sturdier. So I use a block. Okay, all right. So I'm going to use the same color combination, uh, dark. The shadows were dark also, so they, I'm using this combination of uh, ultramarine blue, a little bit of Payne's gray, make it nice and dark, and then burnt sienna. Okay, even a little bit of uh, purple in there. I'll put a little bit of cornucopium violet in there, give it a little, give it a little purple color. Okay, so the first shadow pattern I'm going to put in is the one that's from this tree right here. So I line up my block. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move this uh, out of the way, this painting board out of the way. Just use my flat painting board. I think it may be one of my problems, but it's, it's moving on me. All right, so I'm going to line up. I'm going to line up my block. I'm gonna get this first. I'm gonna get this, this tree here, which I haven't painted in yet, but I'm gonna do the shadow pattern. So I'm gonna come over here. The shadow pattern goes out here on this side. Boom. And then there's this tree over here. It's gonna have a shadow. And then there's a tree back here. Let's see, I get the right angle. Yeah, the angles are kind of interesting. Uh, they they radiate out from the sun the sun rays, but it's also the direction the trees were in. And they were all different. And as I, I'm pushing the brush down now to make them a little bit. Uh, as, they, as the shadows go out, the shadows get wider. So I'm pushing the brush down into the paper. And you'll see here, also, it's darker at the base of the tree. I'll get that a little bit later. At the base of the tree, and then uh, as it goes down, it gets a little bit lighter. And that's exactly what I wanted. So as you push the, pull the brush down, uh, I have to look at my drawing now. Oops, I got paint on my, on my finger. Let's see. Okay. This one here. This one here. We have here. a comment that uh, oh. that's an interesting technique that you're using with the, the block and the rules. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That, that's uh, the, the technique is you come up with different ways of painting, and the one thing when you find an, an area you're trying to do, sometimes you uh, you know you need a a tool or a, a way of doing something and this is still a little bit wet but what I want to do is I want to get this there's one more there's one more tree here I haven't put in I put a couple of trees I haven't put in yet so let me put those in before I draw before I go any further there's a tree here so it makes more sense there's a tree here that crosses over which is interesting so I'm going to start here yeah yeah I'm trying to reach it I'm sorry sorry about my head there's a tree here that crosses over This tree here. Okay. That one there is a shadow, and there's also uh, a tree here right in, right across the boat. So I want to put that in also. So I want to put all the trees in so the the, mat, the uh, shadow patterns will match up with what I'm what I'm drawing. So let me go. Uh, I'm going to put this one in. Okay. All right. Okay, that'll, that'll complete the picture. Okay. So we have a tree going right across the boat. The boat's in the back behind that. That makes that that shows that this tree is in front and the boat is behind. So that shows a little bit of distancing also, uh, which is important when you do a painting, get, getting depth in the painting. Okay, 
let's see. I'm gonna keep moving along here. I'm gonna try. And, I'm gonna try to get these shadows done so that we're finished. Uh, and uh, if I don't, I got. I did a, a painting I finished up already, and I'll show you how it turned out. But I want to show you the techniques here, and that may be what I have to do because if this is taking a lot of time to do this, and I I, was, I thought it'd be a little bit faster, but uh, that's okay. Um, Let's see, I'm past that one over here. Move this one out. Okay. And then this one, there's a shadow behind that. There's a tree behind this one. Okay. Oh. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. That's why I'll probably uh, what I'll have to do is just show just show the one I did and, and go from there. Uh, this one back here. I want to get that one in. Okay. I load up the brush again. I line up my uh, line up my uh, edge and then press it down. Okay. Okay. So you can see how dramatic those shadows are becoming because they're, they're very dark but there's that light background behind it the uh, the lead the the pine needles which were light in the sun and that, that's what was so dramatic about this okay there's one other tree i have so i gotta put that in also whoops and before i go any further i don't want to get the paint on it i gotta go over here i gotta move this over and there's another tree that, uh from this side i gotta put that in so it makes sense there's a tree over here Okay, and load up the paint, and I come and start at the base. And this tree here is leaning over, across. There, there we go. Okay, all right. Thank God. I got all the trees in now, so you can see the there's a couple trees leaning, which makes it interesting. And this one here, I got to fill in. Okay, all right. Now it'll start making more sense. Then that one I'm going to bring in from here. Load up the brush. Okay. And then I have one more. Let's see. One more down here. This is a big one down here. Okay. So I got this one. Load up the brush. Okay, trying to keep that uh, direction of the angle and so forth because uh, that's important. The sun, the sunlight was coming in. It wasn't straight in. It came in at an angle. So I'm trying to, uh, this gives you a little uh, depth perception of uh, the angle of the light and the angle of the shadows. Now that one there is going to have another one on top of that one because that was a wide shadow from a, the two trees mopping together. Okay. And then uh, there was one there in the center. I think I want to bring that one over too. Yeah, that was where it was. Okay. I want to combine these three, uh, these three tree trunks here into one shadow pattern they're close together okay all right then bring that on out all right and then uh got one more or maybe two more let's see this one's going to come out like that Get one more in here. Then the last one I'm going to put in is this one right here at the end. Okay, I got one more. Okay, let's see. This block is also holding the paper in place too. I'm so holding the paper in place as I do the uh, put the pressure on the paper. And then uh, also put the the angle on the brush. 
grace and spirituality said to add to what you were saying that sometimes we must improvise. Yes, <laughs> improvise. That, that's a, you know, uh, to me, uh, art, and when you're painting especially, it's, uh, uh, you have to make a lot of decisions. And uh, basically you find out, okay, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do that direction? And, uh, and you have to work it out. So it's a problem-solving techniques that you come up with. And this is the this is the way I solved this problem, was to uh, now I have a cross angle here which I want to put in. This is interesting. This tree is leaning over, so I'm going to have it uh, angled down here. So the, all the so all the so all the shapes and and shadows all sort of read together. Okay. Uh, now the only other thing. Now, this is not finished. I mean, I, I did this, and I and I have a shadow pattern. I went. Around. I may uh, show you what I did on the final one, and uh, just let it go at that. Uh, because there's a shadow pattern on the ground, which I take the same. I take a smaller brush now. This is a uh, another uh, bristle brush, using the same using the same colors, and uh, and I go in here and I do a. I added some more. I added some more shadows down here on the on the ground. Because I got to put uh, these bushes need to be put in too, and I won't have time to do all that. So, and this came this came over here, uh, an angle over here, like this. A little bit up there. Then there was a, a shadow from this bush line over here. From the bushes. Uh, <clears throat> this came down. Yeah. Question? Uh, no, Vicki Wright is uh, complimenting you, and she says hello from Hackney in West East London. East London. Wow. Hackney in East London. Wow. Well, welcome. I'm glad to hear, hear from London. I hope the weather is as good over there as it is here. Uh, we're, we're having a... a a nice week this week with the weather for us, at least until the winter time gets here. And I'm going to be out painting this weekend again. Uh, let's see from this angle. Uh, go over here, and I get a bigger brush now. Uh, okay, I'm going to finish. Let me just play around a little bit more with the with the uh, shadow pattern here. A shadow pattern from the trees, and I haven't done those, so I, I'm going to show you my final painting that I did uh, previously, what I did before to set up for preparation. There's a shadow pattern here from the from the trees and from the, the branches and so forth that are in the top. Okay, there's a little happen there, and then uh, <clears throat> uh, up here, just for a little, de just a small detail. Uh, Up here in the bushes would be uh, uh, some greenery along the edge of the along the edge of the water, and I've got masking fluid down here too. So I'm just going to go ahead right now and just put in the greenery. Now I took the masking fluid off and put a little. And I'll show you what I did with that. But this would be the greenery along the edge, and you can put uh, you can put branches in there also. Okay, all right. So now let me show you. Uh, Vicky's response is, uh, it's dark and rainy. <laughs> dark and rainy. <laughs> wow. And that uh, it's very elegant work. Okay. Well, let me show you. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna bring my other painting out that I did now. Okay. So what I did here was I at least I got the shadow pattern in. I got the tree line in, and I started with some of the foliage up here, and I got the boat in and so forth. Okay. So that that's kind of. Well, I have I have a little bit more to do on this one, so I'm going to show you the one I finished before before I came on air. So let me turn this. Let me go over here and show you this one. Okay. Now there there is more more of a finished painting here. What I did was I, I added that uh, I added a, a row of uh, bushes along here. The bushes I added some foliage in there along that with some flowers. There were some reds and yellows and oranges along the edge of the waterway. Okay. Then I put some branches up on the trees, over here and over here. Okay, 
Then I took the white mask off the, uh, the boat and showed the white mask against the, the dark background, okay? So those, those could be, those are details that I would have added on that. Now let me show you with a mat. We'll put a mat around this to show it off a little bit better. Okay, so there's, there's basically a finished painting. And I think uh, uh, Path of Light is coming through here, and that's what I was trying to capture. A nice Path of Light coming through here, nice, bright, shiny. Back here was shadows on this side. And then I put the boat in the water as, as uh, something that was going by. I picked them up, then adding, adding the other elements. I think the, the challenge here, of course, was the shadow pattern in the trees. And what I did, I showed you the technique with the... Uh, with the uh, what I call a straight edge with a, with a, with a piece of two by four to hold it up and then we drew along, paint it along the edge. Okay. Once you get the drawing in. Okay. Well, I hope you like that. I enjoyed painting it and, uh, it's, uh, what I may do is there's no reason to go ahead and finish this off. I'm just going to show you what I finished here anyway. Okay. So let's go back to my, uh, main camera. <laughs> okay. I thought I could finish that painting a little faster because I, uh, the technique I had of uh, finding the shadows and so, so forth, I thought I could do a little bit faster. But uh, as in everything else, uh, you know, plans all all seem to uh, sometimes not as work out the way exactly the way you want them to work out. But I'm glad I did a painting ahead of time, so you can see sort of what the results will look like with a little more time and adding a little more detail. Okay, so. Uh, if you want to, if you want to post your, if you want to try this and paint along with this, I've got the, I'll have the drawing and the and the uh, reference photograph in my website, everswatercolors.com, and you can post it on uh, Facebook, on my Everest Watercolors art page on Facebook, if you'd like to do that, and they can share it with the group there uh, of, of of your efforts and so forth. So I'll be back again this week at two o'clock with another water, uh, another watercolor discussion, and. Uh, Later on this evening, I'll be back with Simply Drawing with Everett at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be back this evening. So until next week on Thursday at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, you all have a happy, healthy day and a happy, healthy week. And I hope the weather gets better there in, in England, which it always will be. Tomorrow will be a nicer day. Uh, it's what we say here, say tomorrow will be a better day. So anyway, well, thank you all for watching in and uh, share the video and uh, give me some uh, comments and some thumbs up. I it helps with my rating. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Oh, bye. <laughs>